I want to talk to you a little bit more about this hydrochloric acid in the stomach. First of all, the function, and then we'll go into how it's produced. We've already done the functions pretty much, but just to highlight, so HCL, um, it's going to be contributing to this high acidity. So it's going to be dissociated into um, H plus and Cl minus. Let's actually draw an arrow there. Um, this is an acid, right? So HCl is going to increase hydrogen ions and lower pH. It is acidic. So the stomach itself is about pH between one and a half to three and a half. That's really low. Your blood is like seven, so very acidic. Um, this HCl is important for activating enzymes. So pepsinogen, we already saw that, is activated into pepsin. The active form that breaks down proteins can cleave amino acid um, peptide bonds that put together amino acids. This is due to the acidic environment. Kills bacteria. Um, and denatures proteins. Your proteins are highly dependent on the pH around them. Those of you in biochem know this, right? You draw different structures of proteins in different um, pHs. This really low pH can affect a lot of proteins fairly extremely. Um, pH of two, come on. Yeah. So we're breaking down, denaturing, changing protein structure in order to um, start to chemically, this is chemical digestion. So both this pepsin and this, this is, these are type of chemical digestion. We're not just mechanically like smushing. So HCL is important. Let's look at how this is produced. So this might look like it's gonna get scary, um, but don't worry. Here's a gastric gland. That's where HCL is produced, right? If we zoom in to these cells here, what cells are these? These are parietal cells, right? That's where HCL is produced. So these blue are parietal cells. That means this guy is a parietal cell. This is your capillary. We've got interstitial fluid here, ISF. And then we've got the lumen of the stomach. So, so what's this purple stuff? This is another cell that lines the epithelium. So this is an epithelial cell, let's just say. Because we're looking, we're zoomed in, right, to the lining of that gastric gland. So we need to make um, HCL. We actually do this why do I have a capillary here? Coming from the capillary is CO2. CO2 is going to enter the cell and combine with water. You've seen this before. What enzyme converts this to this temporary molecule and then bicarbonate? with a hydrogen ion. What enzyme does this? We've seen this in the respiratory system, right? This is carbonic anhydrase. Right, nothing new here, just you need to, it happens here in the cell, just like it happens in a red blood cell. This hydrogen ion is going to be pumped out into the lumen of the stomach. That's great, that's, that's acidic, we, we, that's what we want. Um, it's actually going to be, this is a little bit of a side note right now, you can see that it's counter transported with K, with potassium. So we have potassium that is leaking out through potassium leak channels, oh my gosh. Um, sorry, it's exciting because you know about potassium leak channels. I'm just gonna label that off to the side here. Those are constantly allowing potassium to leak out. 
So that allows us to exchange a positive ion for a positive ion right here. This thing has a special name. It's pumping things against their concentration gradients. It's a K plus H plus ATPase, kind of like a sodium potassium co-trans um, pump. It's a pump. It's like the ATP pump. It is an ATP pump. It's just for um, potassium and hydrogen instead of sodium and potassium. Pretty cool. So that allows our this to be inside the cell. That's what we wanted. Okay, one more thing we need. Um, we need to get chloride inside the cell. So let me go back to my black color here. This is bicarbonate. This is actually going to go back out into the blood, which is how we like to carry carbon dioxide in the blood. So isn't that convenient? Um, carbon dioxide is actually carried as bicarbonate. So this process is helping out our cardiovascular system, our circulatory system, respiratory system, gas transport. In order to exchange this HCO3, um, we exchange it with Cl minus. So when I say these like, it's this positive, positive, it's negative, negative here, it is, it's an equilibrium thing. Exchanging inside and outside of the cell, you wanna have things in equilibrium, right? So if we have a negative thing going out of the cell, it, we want a negative thing coming into the cell or we need to adjust at some other time point. So that's what this is here. Cl minus is coming in, bicarbonate's going out. Well, that's pretty convenient because Cl minus um, can then just go into the lumen of the stomach. Chloride is, let me make sure I say this right, um, higher inside the cell than outside the cell, right? Um, so it is going to diffuse into this lumen. Okay, now we've got HCl, yay. Okay, let me make sure I set everything here. I will walk through it quickly. H plus and bicarbonate are generated from carbonic acid dissociating. This, this is kind of the first step right here. Actually, that's what these little numbers blanks are here. I should not use blue. So that is step one. And that based on what you know already, you can have it all in one step. There you go. Um, H plus and CO and bicarbonate generated from carbon dioxide and water. Number two, off of color. Two, there we go. I did it. The H plus K plus ATP pump is going to exchange those two pump hydrogen out of the cell. Potassium can return out down its leak channels. Its job is just to kind of help help out with this. Um, three, a carbonate is going to leave the cell and be exchanged for chloride coming into the cell or chloride can diffuse into the lumen of the stomach. Pretty darn cool.